Oh, I'm talking with Jonathan Miller. We, I know when you're in America, students like to have you come to the campuses and talk to them, and um, uh, several of them have asked me to get you on the show as often as possible. Did, about your own education, when you were uh, when you were in school, did mm. you ever have that feeling that what am I going to do with this when I get out? Peter Cook and Dudley Moore were here the other night, and they both claimed that their education has not um, carried over into their lives. Well, my education has carried over continuously into my life. I was very happy at school. Um, I knew from a very early age that I wanted to be involved in medical science in some way or other. Um, and therefore, because of the English system of specialization, I began early. But I, I enjoyed school before that. Uh, I enjoyed doing Latin and Greek, and I enjoyed doing English. And then I enjoyed very much doing my science subjects. Um, and it seemed self-evident that these things would carry on into, into uh, life afterwards. And in fact, even having left medicine, uh, I still feel my mind framed by the studies which I made at school. I did a lot of biology at school. I was very keen on zoology. I was very keen on field collection and going out and watching animals and classifying them and naming them and doing things of that sort. And the whole idea of being forced to look at the creation around uh, is something which remains with me. And so, I, in fact, I would say that the school was perhaps the most important experience of my life. And did you know it at the time? I did. I was very happy and felt there was, that I was receiving instruction which was going to be important to me later on. I mean, there were certain features of the institution itself which I found stultifying at certain times. I mean, tremendous emphasis upon games. I mean, I'm no good at games. I have flat feet and cowardice, and the combination of the two is, is fatal for games. Um, and I used to get notes from my parents to say, um, his flat feet have got worse this week. Um, the arches are lowering daily. Um, and I would try to avoid these encounters. There was at the school that I went to, at my public school, a compulsory game, though, that had to be played each spring term. There was boxing, you see. Now, for someone with my sort of nose, it's a, 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 a fatal encounter. And, I always, I, and the, 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 there was a huge Darwinian in, uh, sort of contest which was convened, in which every single boy in the school was forced to take part. Flat feet, willy-nilly, didn't really matter. You didn't fight with your feet, you see. Um, although I had flat fists, you see. But, but I, was, um, <laughs> I was forced into this game, and each spring term I knew, and I was always drawn with the same boy who happened to have the same weight as I had. And this boy was an extremely effective pugilist. H.V.D. Jones, he was called. Um, and, uh, or, or yeah, yeah, it, was, it was always down the, in, as these school lists are, Jones, H.V.D. And um, <laughs> I, 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 I would always see every time, oh, God, there's Jones again. And um, I would try to greet him in a very friendly way in the corridors prior to the contest. Hello, Jones, H.V.D. <laughs> um, I hope that in some way this feature would be avoided. Um, and uh, all I can remember is that terrible first... 30 seconds in the ring, when always Jones HVD went straight for my nose. That terrible smell of aluminium and antimony, which you get in the nose <laughs> when, when, when you're struck. And then, all I can remember are the, so the tears mm. welling up and the, and the nose enlarging, if that was possible, and being led out by a contemptuous sportsmaster who said, well, we all have to take part sometime. And, uh, but that was the only game that I had to take part. It was called the Green Cup. And uh, out of this terrible Darwinian melee emerged two fit contestants who were the victors. Uh, and that, that, that Never was yourself. Get, never myself. This no. is the original nose, though. I mean, you didn't suffer any permanent damage. No, 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 I, because, in fact, I was always eliminated from the contest much too early to... Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I mean, also, a tremendous amount of evasive footwork was done, in which I, I, I studied all the movements that went with boxing, but none of the effective ones. There was, you know, I was a great stylist. Yes, of um, course. There was a great deal of this sort of, sort of shaping up, most of which was designed to bewilder Jones HVD. Um, <laughs> And to persuade him to think that, in fact, I was such a, uh, um, a crazed and feeble creature that it would be uh, immoral for him to hit me. So it would just be one blow, the aluminium and the antimony, and then out. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you suppose HVD is today? Uh... I don't know. I think he, perhaps he's an ENT surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a surprise for you, Jonathan, behind this curtain. <laughs> that, would be, uh, that would be unpleasant. Well, say, is, is the Queen broke or not? Rumors circulate. <laughs> Well, you asked me. I mean, I mean, I've received no, uh, no inquiries from her. Right? <laughs> well, uh, r rumors began to circulate a, a year or so ago that the Queen was in trouble and perhaps was going to have to sell off part of her stamp collection I, and various I, things. And... Yes, I have no idea about that at all. I mean, there are people who know. Uh, I'm sure that Mr. Powell uh, um, would probably be able to tell us. Um, but I, I honestly don't. I've heard you know, vague conversations about this, but I'm really so uh, completely uninterested in what goes on there that I'd have no idea what her financial status is at all. You don't have a feeling of insecurity when the Queen is out of the country? Uh... Um, yes, um, for various reasons, but... Um, <laughs> so, um, 
No, on the whole, I, I, I really don't know uh, um, how she is off at the moment. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sure she'd be all right, really. <laughs> I guess so. People always say, well, why can't they just sell a painting or sell uh, some gold well, you dishes see, the thing or is something that, that like so that. much of the property, in fact, is really invested in her on our behalf. Mm -hmm. uh, she's, she's, in fact, the custodian of a, lot, of a most fantastic collection of paintings yes. which really belong to the nation. And she is simply the official custodian of them, and they're held in her name uh, in perpetuity for the nation. Um, so she couldn't sell them off. I mean, I suppose there are large, large numbers of things that, that, that she could sell. Um, I don't know what, I mean, lands of some sort, I suppose. I mean, I've, I've got a very sort of fairy tale image of the sort of property which she has, you see. I mean, I don't know. Perhaps there are rich caskets of jewels in the basement which she runs through her crazed fingers at night. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I, I like to think so. That's my image of a queen, too. I mean, I see her, you know, sort of racing coroneted through the night to see the jewels, the jewels. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 I don't know. I'm with you.